Murray, believe it or not, China is the 1,000th race in Formula One history. So I thought it was perhaps a good, um, the, perhaps a rigorous thing to do would be just to ask you um, for a few of your favourites. So if I was to say during those 1,000 races that go back to the first ever Grand Prix, 13th of May 1950, Silverstone, World Championship Grand Prix, in that time, favourite driver? Fangio. I knew you were going to say that. Cause yeah. <laughs> what, why Fangio ahead of a Senna or a Schumacher or a Jim Clark? Uh, Tom, it, it, people ask, say, who's the, who's the greatest? Uh, and I always say to them, look, you, I, I can't answer that question because you can't compare drivers of one generation with drivers of another generation when they were driving different cars at different circuits to different rules. Um, you just have to make a subjective judgment uh, and you can try to try to justify it, but if someone thinks passionately about someone else, it's very difficult to challenge them. Why Fangio? Well, uh, he was unique and, and it is still unique in that he... Uh, won five world championships, four of them with different constructors, with Maserati, with Ferrari, uh, with Mercedes-Benz and with Alfa Romeo. Now, admittedly, he did that because he was astute enough to know that he was the best and that he could therefore drive the best car and he therefore used to just have yearly contracts and uh, at the end of the year, he would decide which which constructor he was going to drive for next. Um, but he was a great person as well. It wasn't just that he was a great driver. He was a humble individual who had come from very ordinary circumstances at Balcarce in Argentina. And he came across to Europe uh, and, and conquered it in a 4CLT Maserati. Uh, and he was uh, absolutely supreme. The only person who really could hold a candle to him at that time was Sterling Moss, the greatest driver never to have won the World Championship, and much greater than a lot of the ones who did.